Hi everyone, my name is Maggie. I am a new virtual event staff uh, this year for the SSF. Thank you so much for joining this great event for the motivational speaker. We're so happy to have you here. And we look forward to all of the events through this year uh, that you'll join us at. I just wanna quickly introduce our motivational speaker and then I will let him take it away. So we, today we have Blake Fly. Uh, Blake is a huge fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He is heavily lactose intolerant, and his favorite movie is admittedly The Notebook. He spends nearly a decade living and working in university residences and has had over 6,000 roommates during his student life. Blake has been a TEDx, TEDx conference host, a featured TEDx speaker, and is the author of The Campus Life Guide. Blake's work has been featured on CTV, Breakfast Television, The National News, and he has even shared the stage with CBC's Rick Mercer. Blake's family means the world to him, and his partner is the girl he plans to cook craft dinner with for over the next 75 years. Please welcome Blake Fly. I brought a lot of things with me when I began time at college. But about three items stood out in particular. For starters, there was this. The backpack, necessary for the academic success. So think to yourself right now about the homework you get to do at Seneca. This was a key piece to my time at college. But the second item that I brought, I only brought with me because I wanted to feel comfortable around all these new people that I would be interacting with, whether it was in person or online. So the second item that I brought with me to college was the following. Now, as I hold up this bear, some of you are looking at the screen right now, thinking to yourself, you took a bear to college? Some of you are looking at me right now on screen, thinking to yourself, you took a bear? And now some of you are thinking to yourself, maybe I should bring my bear, even though it's online. And even though I'm at home, I think I'll incorporate my bear during my time at Seneca College. <laughs> but the third item that I brought to college, it was something that a buddy of mine in high school said to me, Blake, if you take one of these with you, when you're cruising around on campus, people might be more likely to be your friend. So I figured it was worth a shot. The third item that I brought to college was the following. I brought my guitar. The problem was at that time in my life, I didn't know how to play the guitar. <laughs> but my logic was simple. If I just walk around campus every so often while carrying my guitar or if I'm hanging out online and at least people can see my guitar, friends might be more inclined to have a conversation or flock towards me. So on my first day in my first year of college, I had the opportunity to actually be physically on campus and I was living in a residence. So I decided to just walk around the residence on the first day of school, carrying my guitar, hoping to find one of my first new college friends. And this is how it panned out on that first day of school. And uh, for the sake of this story, if you've ever tried to play the guitar, congratulations. At that time in my life, I barely knew how to play anything. So I start roaming the halls, playing absolute nonsense. No friends yet. I keep walking. Nothing. I realize this is not a good idea. I barely even know what I'm doing, but I keep walking and I keep strumming. Nobody cares. But just as I'm about to give up on this guitar playing idea, and head back to my part of campus to hang out with my one friend who I just introduced you to. 
I decide, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't go back to my room yet because I heard this sound from down the hallway. Specifically, this sound coming from a room, coming from a sound system, meaning there was music being played, meaning there was maybe some social situation taking place, meaning maybe this is where my future friends were hanging out. They just had not met me yet. So for the sake of this story on screen, let's say that the entrance to this room in the building where my future friends were hanging out, let's say that the entrance to that room is pretty much this microphone in front of my face. So I start walking towards the social room. I'm approaching the door. I'm now in front of the door. I have now passed the door. Not a good idea. But then as I'm past the door, I hear a voice bellow from that room I had just walked by. Whoa! That guy had a guitar! So I look down and I confirm. <laughs> I was the guy with the guitar on the first day of college. So attempting to play it cool, which I did not really know how to do, I walk back towards the social room. What's up? Dude, you have a guitar. Come in here and play us a song. <laughs> this was a problem. Because as I told you, I didn't really know how to play the guitar at that time of my life. Now let me paint the picture for you for a moment. Because this was a room in a residence building. And whether you live in a residence building or never will step foot in one, the story is still relevant. Because for me, in that room, there was maybe six or seven people. And I realized at this time in human history, hanging out in a room with other people, it's a whole different conversation. But for me, I was nervous because these were six or seven people I had not yet met. And they were expecting me to do a thing I'd never done before, which was play some guitar for a live group of human beings. Now, fortunately, I learned this emergency song on the guitar days before college. And if you watching on this screen right now have ever even dabbled in the guitar, this might be your one song. So I brought in the four chords to the only song I kind of knew, standing in front of a group of total strangers who may have soon been my new friends at college. This was what I knew how to play. The only chords I knew were the chords to this cliche old school song that was like 15 years old when I began college, which makes it even older now. And the song was called Wonderwall by this band called Oasis. And if you've never heard the song Wonderwall, basically it's the song that at every bonfire everywhere, somebody sitting at that bonfire who barely knows how to play a guitar, there's usually someone who says, hey, I know how to play Wonderwall. I was that guy, the Wonderwall guy, first day of college, in front of a group of people that I had not yet met. And before I could start singing, the host of this little social gathering stopped me from playing. Dude, we can't really see you. Get, get in the middle. Okay, I'm already freaking out, and now I'm standing in the center of this circle of total strangers. So I step into it, and I bring back the chords to Wonderwall. But the next scary part was the fact that I was not a singer at all. So they're expecting me to play this song and sing this song. And when I brought in the lyrics, it sounded brutal. So allow me to indulge you in that right now. You don't have to sing. You just get to let, listen to me just sing brutally as if it was that first day of college playing Wonderwall. This is what it sounded like and it was awkward. It was tense. Here we go. Today is going to be the day we're going to throw it back to you. By now, should have somehow realized what you got to do. 
I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. <laughs> and I kept strumming, but I stopped singing. Not just because it was horrific, but because I noticed something happening in that room of total strangers. By playing these simple chords on the guitar, the instrument I barely knew how to play. I noticed one person in the room. They took out their cell phone. They turned on the flashlight. They put their arms in the air. And they started to wave their arms back and forth with their light in the air, swaying to the music. And then once that person began doing that, other people, one person at a time, did the same thing. Took out their phone, switched on the light, put their arms in the air, and swayed them back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. And there I was, the new guy on campus, thinking, huh, this is going pretty well. But the coolest thing about it was that once one person put their arms in the air, they gave permission for everyone else to do the same. And when I brought back the lyrics, a few of the people even joined me in singing. And minutes into life at college, I realized this went much better than I thought. But I want to explain why I tell you that story to kick off your time as a student at Seneca College during a time in human history that is oh so unique. I start my story there because for me, that's where my story started. And for you, this is your beginning. I realize walking around a building, probably not going to happen nearly in the same way, if at all. Playing music with a group of strangers, probably not going to be happening this year. But this isn't about playing music for strangers. This isn't about being in a residence building on an actual campus. This is about the fact that after I've traveled the continent for the last 10 years, speaking to hundreds of thousands of students just like you, whether it be on a physical stage or on a virtual screen like right now, the story I just told is the same story that everybody gets to experience when they begin life at college. Those three things that I brought with me, everybody brings something like that. The backpack, this thing right here, you have something just like it. Whether you're doing everything online or once upon a time coming in and out of campus to take some classes this year or get involved in some way, well, you're going to have a backpack or something to carry your academic gear. Everybody here has a program. It is your ticket in to Seneca. Your program is also your ticket beyond into the next chapter of life once you complete your amazing time at Seneca. The second item the bear, everybody brings something just like this, whether they're staying at home or cruising through campus once in a while. It may not actually be a bear, but you have something that basically is a symbol for your people. The second that I held up this little dude, you were warped to a time before right now. Maybe thinking about when you were a kid, maybe thinking about family members, friends, close people in your life. You have people who have played a key role getting you to Seneca. Now you get to also add in the people who will play a key role getting you through your time at Seneca in the years to come. But the third item, the guitar. I'm not saying you should cruise around campus in person or hang out online while playing your clarinet until you find a friend. I mean, hey, if you want to, by all means, go for it. Cruise around with a clarinet and see what happens. Rather, that guitar is simply a symbol for your passions. You are passionate about something. You are passionate about possibly many things. Or maybe you don't know what you're passionate about yet, but Seneca is the perfect place for you to find your passion. But here's the thing. You now know everything you need to know to succeed wildly as a student at Seneca College. I just gave you the shortcut. You literally know everything you need to know. There's only three things that you need. Your program, your people, your passion. But here's the good news and the bad news. 
The good news, there's only three things you need and now you got them. So write that down. Or just remember the symbols, the backpack, the bear, the guitar, your program, your people, your passions. The bad news is you have to balance these three things every minute for your entire student experience at Seneca College, whether you're hanging out on campus once in a while or whether it's entirely online. Because think about it. If all you do is focus on your program, you will burn out. And if all you do is focus on meeting a bunch of people, you will flunk out. But if you don't focus on the things that you are most passionate about or make the time to discover your passions, you and the people around you are going to miss out. Because Seneca College is the place designed for you to find the things that you are most passionate about. And Seneca College is the place that is here to support you so that you get from the beginning of your time as a student to the end of your time as a student with the least number of hurdles, obstacles, headaches, bumps, and bruises, and the most likelihood of succeeding. But there's a few things you need to know to make the most of your time here. So my role is I get to share a few stories with you right now so that this idea of program, people, and passions is not just three words on a screen on your phone that you wrote down or three words that you scribble on a post-it note or three words that you somewhere stick near your computer to remember them. There's some nuances. There's some specific elements to keep in mind. And these stories will really anchor that in for you as you begin your time at Seneca. So let's talk about the academics. This thing, whether you have a backpack, a purse, a paper bag, you carry your program gear, your books, your binders, your laptop, your phone, wherever you go. Even if you're at home working online, you've got the gear to succeed academically. Now, the first time that I wrote an exam when I was at college, it was, uh, hmm, how do I put this? Memorable. This exam took place on a Saturday morning in October. I'd never written exams on a Saturday. I thought, what is this? college yeah it was it was different from high school and so mid-october saturday morning i had my first exam it was in a course called psychology and on the first day of school when i went to psychology way down in the distance i noticed this small little thing at the bottom of the lecture hall the small little thing was known as the instructor and the instructor on day one had information up on the screen in the class and they basically said my name is Dr. Mike. Up there you'll see you got my info, email address, phone at the office, and the hours each week where I will be available for office hours. Time where you can literally email me, send me a message, or come to the office and ask me any questions at all about the exam, about the readings, about the assignments, about the projects, whatever you need. But here's the thing, students. You can always come to me but I'm never coming to you. I thought, well, that's a good little tip. I'm gonna write that down. He said it two times. You can always come to me, but I'm never coming to you. Intense, but it made sense because you know, we weren't in high school anymore. It was on us to independently guide our own academic journey. A few weeks go by. I go to all the classes and prep for the exam. I do my readings, I take my notes, and I wasn't the laptop or the iPad type. I liked actually handwriting. Except the night before the exam, I realized, oh dear, I couldn't read my own writing from all those notes I took. And because I have a tendency to procrastinate back in the day, I didn't realize this until the night before the exam. And even though I went to all the classes, I was behind on my readings because I'm a great reader, but I'm a slow reader. So have you ever been in a situation where you realize, oh dear, I'm in a situation right now. This was not gonna go that good. Well, I was in one of those moments. The night before the exam, I'm up late, I'm cramming, I'm freaking out because I'm realizing this probably won't go that great. In fact, the way that I thought to study 
was I actually went for some help at a resource center on campus and they made available the previous year's exams. So you could look at previous exams as a guide in terms of what kind of questions they might ask for this year's exam. My way of studying at 2 a.m. the night before the exam while I was stressed out beyond words, freaking out, realizing this is not going to go well, was I looked at the previous year's exam and I memorized the order of the answers. So I'd literally sit in the library cubicle on campus at 2 a.m. and I would do this. Number one, A. Number two, B. Number three, C. I was memorizing the previous year's exam answers. You probably right now are thinking to yourself, Blake, that's useless. Guess what? I know. I was even saying it to myself, thinking this is useless. But you know when you're so far gone and you're struggling and you're stressed out and you're worried and you're nervous and you're overwhelmed that you just sort of do something to feel like you're being productive or using time in some way, shape, or form that's considered effective? That was my call. Memorizing last year's exam's answers, even though I knew it wasn't going to help me. I go back to my room in residence. It's about 2 a.m. I set my alarm for the morning exam. The exam was at 9, so I set the alarm for 8. That morning, my roommate, Anthony, gives me the groggy roommate wake-up voice. He leans across the room and says to me, Dude, what time's your exam? I respond, 9. Anthony tells me, it's 9.35. Go! And I give my roommate this bright response. Doesn't matter. I was going to fail anyway. And I go back to bed. This is the moment right now that you, students at Seneca College, are watching me on screen thinking to yourself, wow, <laughs> why is this guy speaking to me? This isn't helpful information. My parents will literally kill me if I follow this guy's advice. Well, hang on. The story's not done. Anthony drags me out of bed, sends me out the door. I run up to the exam center where the exam was being rented. I'm there 45 minutes late. I get to the door and the teaching assistant says to me, you can't come in. After 30 minutes, no one can come in. That's the policy. So wherever you came from, you got to go back. Sorry about this. So I'm walking back to my room on campus doing the math in my mind. Okay, so if this exam was worth 30% of the final grade, and if Blake didn't write the exam, that means Blake probably got approximately zero on the exam. So right off the hop, I lose 30% of the total course grade. My first grade at university was going to be a zero. Take that, college Blake. But I remembered when I got back to my residence room, that voice in my head from day one of class where Dr. Mike, the instructor, said this, you can always come to me, but I'm never coming to you. I still had a printout from Dr. Mike with his information on it. So I sent an email right away to Dr. Mike. I start typing, dear Dr. Mike, my name is Blake. I'm in your psychology class, which I enjoy very much. I'm just gonna put this out there and be honest, I got nothing to lose. I slept through the midterm today. If there's a makeup exam, I'd love to write it. Let me know if that's possible. My name is Blake. I really like your class. Sincerely, Blake. P.S. I'm a really nice guy. Send. I send that email and I realize this guy's not going to respond to me. He has so many students. He has multiple classes. Today's the exam day. Like he's going to reply. A couple hours later, I get a reply. And Dr. Mike's email read something like this. Blake, Dr. Mike here. Got your email. Not a lot of students ask for help. And when they do, they're not exactly polite about it. The makeup exam is next Saturday. Here's the time. Here's the location. Don't sleep in. Study. Good luck, Dr. Mike. P.S. I'm also a really nice guy. Now here's the thing. You need to pick up the right part of the message in this story. Because I don't want you to hear my story right now and think to yourself, Oh, <laughs> this is sweet. 
I'm going to nail it at Seneca. I'm just going to go to some of the courses online, in person, hybrid style, whatever is your approach this year. And then I'll sleep a lot. I won't really read anything or study much or do assignments. And then I'll send a very kind, thoughtful email. And then I'll just write the makeup exam. Done. No, it's not the case. I still don't know to this day how I got that break cut for me. Maybe the instructor was in a good mood. Maybe the instructor had some like raffle that he did for one student who slept in each semester. I don't know. But what I do know is that I learned a lesson six weeks into college that most students don't learn in six weeks or six months or ever until it's too late. And that message was inside the email from Dr. Mike. And I'm now going to give that message back to you. And here it was. Not a lot of students ask for help. And when they do, they're not exactly polite about it. Do you know why that is? It's because sometimes we go so far past the point of no return that when we actually let people know that we're struggling, we can't even be logical about it. We're so stressed out, we're so strung out, we're so worried, we're overwhelmed, we're scared, and we can't actually be thoughtful in making the requests for needing a hand. Whether that be academically, emotionally, socially, psychologically, all of the above. But to know that not a lot of students ask for help, and to hear that message, and to learn that lesson weeks into college, it is now my mission to make sure that I share it back to people just like you every year at this time of year before you begin your year officially. So I'm going to say this message five times so that it becomes both memorable and annoying. Because memorable and annoying things, they usually stick. Academically, at Seneca, the only words you truly need to succeed with your schoolwork are coming at you right now. Ask for help. Ask for help. Ask for help. Ask for help. This time in French, let's go bilingual. Bonjour. Ask for help. That's it for us talking about your program. Now let's talk about your people, the relationships in your life, the people that got you to Seneca and the people you're about to meet who will play a key role at getting you through time at Seneca. To talk about people, going to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of story time here so i'm just going to bring up a slide here da -da, da -da, da -da. Uh -uh, ba -ba. here we go and yes play done steve can i get a emoji thumbs up if you see that on the screen bright and clear there it is look at that wow we should do a road show hey steve can i get the uh party emoji like the celebration one. Oh, can I get the hand one again? Look at this. Nice. All right. You are beginning the year right now. And I'm sure that your grade nine self a few years ago probably didn't have visions of college that involved a pandemic and masks and distancing and hybrid learning. It's a weird time. But you have so many opportunities in front of you that didn't exist pre-pandemic. So when I lived with a buddy, he and I wanted to make some friends in the building that we moved into. And I lived with this guy named Elan. I met Elan in college. And so he and I, we had been friends for years. We'd done school together. We met each other by playing music. And then after we graduated, we thought it'd be fun to be roommates and it'll be kind of like college. It'll be like living in a building. It'll be like living on campus. But we were a little bit wrong in that assumption. So we moved into a new building in Toronto and we were living at Young and Steeles. Yeah, I think that's where we were. North York, Ontario. North York, Toronto, Ontario. For, so for some of you, you're probably right there right now. For others, maybe you're like, Never heard of it, never been there, what's going on? And it wasn't Steels, it was Young, Young and Shepherd. I used to live at Young and Steels. So Elan and I were at Young and Shepherd. Maybe you've been at that intersection if you're from this area. And on the day we moved in, we did this. 
we wrote cards to our new neighbors. We wrote to our new neighbors in apartment 2008 from the new guys in 2003. That was our apartment number, 2003. We wrote a custom card to each person on our floor. So this wasn't just like print once, multiple copies done. We hand wrote custom cards for everybody. We even drew a diagram. That way, if people saw us in the hallway, they would recognize who was who. Clearly, you know, I'm the guy on the left. Elan's the guy on the right. And then under each card, we wrote the following. We basically said, to our neighbors, we're the new guys who recently moved into unit 2003, and we're still getting settled. If we don't cross paths soon, we just want to drop off a card to say hello. We are Blake and Elan. See you above. And we've been friends since university. Feel free to drop by number 2003 if you ever need anything. Cooking supplies, DVDs, etc. Classic DVDs, you know, throwback. We want to keep people feeling like we can relate to the older demographic. Or just to say thanks for being one of our new neighbors, Blake and Elan. So that's what we did. We made these cards for everybody. And what's cool about this is you don't even need to necessarily be in person to do something like this. You could do this digitally. You could do this just like with a text, an email, social media messages, whatever you want to do, voice notes, videos. But we wanted to go first. We wanted to spark the relationship before our neighbors did. Because if we want to get the most out of the place we were living, we figured, well, we should probably introduce ourselves to some of these people that have been here before us. But to be honest, we got a bit lazy. We sent the messages, we taped them to everybody's door, but we didn't knock on their doors. We didn't follow up. We didn't really get to know people. We thought the card would do all the work for us. Wrong. We had to take a few more steps. Perhaps you can relate. Maybe this applies to you with your friends, people that you've been on teams with, people that you've worked with, people that you ended up dating. You actually need to take a few steps to build the relationship. So we decided to take another step a few weeks into it. This here is a quick little clip of Elan and I introducing ourselves through music. And I'll just play it for you. But all you need to know when you watch this is that our address was 4 Forest Laneway. 4 Forest Laneway. That'll now make some more sense based on what you're about to hear. Check it out. This is something that we thought we'd make for our fellow neighbors in the building at Young and Shepherd in North York, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, a few weeks into moving in and starting that chapter of our life. Rolling. It's rolling. <clears throat> so everyone, this guy is Elan. And this over here is Blake. And we're your neighbors. So we thought we would just say, hey, we live on the 20th door so come on by and just knock on our door we might be in the lobby or doing our laundry that's where we could be here we go so we, hey hey hey, 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 hey. four fours lane way four fours lane way hey hey Four Forest Lane Way. Four Good Forest Lane Way. Hey. <laughs> See you later. See you around. What's up? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> As you can see, it was a creative way to meet people. People that maybe we wouldn't even get to see in person. That's why we made a video. You right now are at a time in human history where just walking up to someone and making a friend is very different. It's got its own challenges. It's a whole different sport than we're used to from years past. But you have technology available to you. I'm not saying you write a song about where you live and post it to YouTube. What I'm saying is what are different ways that you can actually engage with other people, whether you're with them on Zoom right now, whether you're in an online class with them in some kind of forum or chat thread or messaging 
group or something related to classes? How could you get involved on campus, even if it's in a virtual capacity at Seneca, but just pay attention to who the leaders are, pay attention to who your peers are, and just send them a message, give them some kind of a shout out, send a voice note or a video to let them know that, hey, you said this thing in this class, it impacted me, it helped me, I thought I'd say thanks for that, I wanted to introduce myself, my name is Blake, good luck at Seneca, maybe we can connect some time and just do some work together on Zoom or something like that. You don't need to be in person to create a relationship with a person. We know that by now. We've known that for years. But you have such greater opportunity to form connections, friendships, meaningful relationships online, sometimes than you even can in person. I also want you to think about what you can do if it's just total, 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 basic, simple, mundane, borderline, boring times of the year because hey it's bound to come up we don't really know what's in store for the year ahead also because of where we live winter approaches and then sometimes people are like ah it's cold i'm just gonna like sit around and be at home even more but i want to share another example of how someone made some friends and they didn't even need to physically be around the people while they were doing something to really create a cool experience. Allow me to explain by bringing up a couple little images to tell you this next story. Coming up, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, bam, boom, slides. Steve, throw me an emoji if it's on the screen and ready to rock. Oh, we got the thumbs up. All right, this person is not a Seneca student. This person is a little older than the typical Seneca student, but this person can teach a lifelong lesson to you, the Seneca student. That individual right there, I call him Papa. He's my grandpa. He's a baller. He plays pool. He's 93 and he wears hats. Papa decided he needed to move into a nursing home. You know, he was getting older. He's 93. Want to just be somewhere where he can settle in and not have to do everything on his own. So he moves into a nursing home and he still drives. He still does stuff. He's still very independent. But in his words, the nursing home that he moved into was very boring and filled with old people. Coming from a 93 year old, by the way. But you see, Papa's got a, a youthful energy about him, even though he's in his 90s. And there was a period of time where there was a flu going around in the nursing home. This was pre-pandemic, but people had to stay in their rooms for like a bunch of days because of this sickness going around. So he got super bored sitting in his room all the time, but he noticed something. He noticed outside of his window, there was a goose. Think to yourself right now, have you ever seen a goose? Odds are pretty high. If not, have you seen a bird? The answer is yes. This is basic. This is nothing fancy. He just sees a bird outside the window. But this goose was actually a unique goose because that goose was laying eggs and becoming a mother goose. So Papa, as a way to pass the time, decided to get out his old school digital camera and film mother goose and keep a little video log, if you will. Each day he would make a little movie, have a conversation with Mother Goose, just to track the progress while he was super bored, sitting in his room all the time, in the building with a bunch of old people who he didn't consider too entertaining. So I just wanna show you an example of what some of these video clips involved. Well, good morning, Mother Goose. Sorry I've neglected you for so many days. However, I see you're up and around, and I just happened to miss you when you was up, and I see there's still eggs. I couldn't see you long enough. You didn't was not the nest long enough to see how many eggs there were. But we'll keep watching. It should be getting close. 25th, accordingly, but uh, who knows? It might be earlier, it might be later. So this is the 21st of April, and the lady's still doing her job. 
pretty sweet, endearing, a simple little documentation of a goose about to have baby geese. A few days pass, a few weeks pass. Papa keeps doing this. He keeps recording this. And here's an example of one of the other video clips. Well, here we are, the 4th of May. And Rodney was so kind and reminded us that there was a birth <laughs> this morning. So we had to come you and view... You want to get in here, John? Come right yeah, in here. Yeah, it's okay. I'll move in in a second. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, watch. we're going to see if she's willing to get off and let us see the new, uh, new uh, family. Yes. Come on, Mother Goose, show off your family. <laughs> John? Yeah? The Bahamas. Christmas dinner. Uh-huh. Yeah. My birthday. When was that? Oh, quite, quite a number of years now. Yeah, when you was younger. Oh, not too much. That's me. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to wait until she makes a move here. These are very simple videos. This is not high production. This is not HBO special. This is not over the top. Wow. TikTok level. Oh my gosh. Millions of views worthy kind of footage. But what this is, is an example of what you can do with something so simple, basic, and everyday as a way to engage your fellow students at Seneca, even if you're not in person. You could just do all this virtually. You could do this in a way that is safe and distant. You could do this in so many different ways. But look at this. Papa decided to make it into a movie. He took all the footage, put it together, which, by the way, is quite boring, and gathered people in the main lounge. He put posters up. He promoted it. He said there will be free prizes if people attend. We'll do a raffle. And they watched the movie. It's a pretty boring movie. Spoiler alert. But he gathered people because it gave them something to talk about. It gave them something to do. It gave them something to remember. And it was a meaningful experience, a meaningful memory, a meaningful moment that Papa took from, hey, look, there's a bird, to a community building experience. And there are the two raffle winners. These two ladies, their name were pulled and they won the eight and a half, the eight by 10 colored photo of Mother Goose and the Baby Geese. So not only did Papa see a bird, do something about it, make it into a video, promote it, gather people, give away prizes and make the prizes on brand related to the goose and the baby geese. Come on, that's next level. And then what do you do to cap it off? A group photo, obviously. Now... This is so entertaining and endearing to me. I'm biased because it's my grandpa. But what I love about it is that so much of this can be done and replicated right now during this time in the world. What are things that you know that can be universals? What are things that you know your fellow students at Seneca will be going through? Is it assignments? Is it classes? Is it projects? Is it exams? Is it something going on with the pandemic? Is it something going on with the weather? What are things that you can say, do, feel, experience, articulate, share to unite you with other students, even if you don't physically cross paths? Because if you go through Seneca alone, you miss the whole point. Seneca College is a community and it is designed to help you succeed at this time in your life. And if you do it alone, okay. But if you do it with others, that's where you get to create memories, moments, and magical experiences that you can look back on for months, years, even decades to come. So all you need to know for people, the only thing you need to say is some form of hello. Be the first person to introduce yourself. Be the first person to send a message in the chat. Be the first person to like someone or comment on someone's post be the first person to actually send a video message or a voice note be the first person to start the relationship because you're all going through this time together you have far more in common than the things that make you different so unite 
on those conversations, unite on those experiences. And this can be done online if it has to be. It can be done in person if that makes sense. But at the end of the day, take it from a 93-year-old dude living in a building. You don't even need to interact with the people to unite them on a conversation, a topic, an idea. And technology makes it way more simple. Everything Papa did in person, in a lounge show in a movie, you can do that kind of stuff virtually 24-7. You know how to do it better than anyone else on the planet. You're built to digitally, virtually create community, memories, moments, and experiences that you and others can cherish for years to come. But there's this other word. Not the word to start relationships, but a word to keep and to deepen relationships. And that word is thank you. If you say thank you to the people that you meet along the way here at Seneca, that will anchor the relationships in a big way. As a way to practice, think of someone in your current life that you could already thank, appreciate, acknowledge, give gratitude to for the impact they've had on your life. Maybe it's your mom, your dad, your best friend, your coach, your counselor, a team member, a neighbor. If you were to send them a text right now, if you were to send them an email right now, if you were to send them an old school letter right now, just with the words, hey, I just want to say thanks. Here's a reason why. You then just tell them one reason you appreciate them and the positive impact they've had on your life. And that kind of thing goes an extremely long way. I've been speaking for over a decade to students just like you on stages and on screens. And the thing that makes me hurt, the thing that pains my ginger heart is that so many students wait until they're done college to appreciate the people that they met in college. So many students wait until it's too late to give the appreciation and the gratitude because it's kind of weird. You might be reluctant to say and do those things. But in the most tragic times in our lives and in our world, human beings get really good at telling people how much they mean to them. So what if you just get really good at that right now, going through college, letting people know the impact that they've had on you as you go, not once it's over. Because that not only starts amazing relationships, but it keeps and deepens relationships in ways that you won't even understand until you pass along your appreciation and gratitude. But now, let's wrap this up by talking about that last thing, your passions. For me, my passion is music. For you, it might be technology, might be art, might be sports, might be writing, might be selfies. I don't know. But if you do your experience as a student at Seneca College and don't share or at least try and find your passion, you've missed the whole point. And others will miss out as well because it is that side of you. It is that part of you. It is that element of you that this community needs from you. So share your gifts with this community and find them if you currently don't really know what those are. So on my first day of college, I played the only chords that I knew how to play as a way to make friends. And it kind of worked. But for you at Seneca, you now know the only three things you need to know to get from the beginning of this chapter in your life to the end of this chapter in your life in a way that helps you make the most of it and succeed through it. First, your program. All you got to do is ask for help along the way because then the resources, they appear. The answers, they'll find you and you don't have to go through it alone. In terms of your people, 
All you have to do is be the first to say hello. And if you really want to go above and beyond, be the first person to say thank you and let people know the impact they've had on your life. Not just once it's too late, but along the way. And in terms of your passions, all you need to do is share them, get involved. Even if a lot of that is virtual, there's so much we can learn about one another just on a screen, just in a chat, a messaging thread, social media, video notes, voice notes, all of it. So as you hear me wrap up right now, just know that if all you do is focus on your program, you're gonna burn out. And if all you do is focus on people, you're gonna flunk out. But if you don't find and share your passions, you're probably gonna miss out. Those are the only three things that you need to succeed at Seneca. The good news, it's only three things. The bad news, it's tough to balance them all along the way. So I wish you well, I wish you luck, and just know that everybody at Seneca is here to support you. They might not come to you, but you can always go to them. Welcome to Seneca College. Thanks for having me here to kick off your year.